We'll continue with, with uh, our lecture today. With, um, as I said yesterday, we'll continue with projective and projective resolution, resolution and semi-field resolution. Before we move to, the, to that step, we have to say something about the algebra structure on the chain complex and the cochain complex. And then say a word on the free loop space cohomology. Let us start with the algebra structure on the chain complex and cochain complex. When I say algebra structure, it means that on the chain complex, we have the structure of coalgebra, and in the cochain, we have the structure of algebra. <coughs> so, first of all, So we'll construct the algebra structure on this differential graded model. Consider delta the usual diagonal, which assigned to any x, the couple x, x. And consider two, the two maps, which are <coughs> differential graded maps. The first one is And the second one is okay. The first one is called the Alexander Winnet map, and the second one is the Allen Ben Zilbert map. Okay. So by using this map, We'll construct the coalgebra structure here as follows. Here we have the map induced by the diagonal, and here we have the Alexander Whitney map here. The composite here is just the coproduct on this is the coproduct on the in the chain algebra in the chain of X. So in those bit. is a co algebra. You can verify that this this uh, this map is a K linear map. It is co associative. We have a unit here and the other property of uh, of co algebra. You know that when you have a coalgebra C, when you consider the dual of that coalgebra, you obtain an algebra. So since the cochain complex is just the dual of chain complex
then is the quotient complex is an algebra. But what is the product here? The product here is denoted by this sign, which is called the cop product and defined as follows. which are sent to any f and g. Here we have f cop g equal to f of sigma applied to i0, e0, e1, e k dot j sigma e k e k plus one up to e n for some sigma n in x n you see n x okay we have this so now we have the structure of algebra here the structure of algebra here so the the, the first one is a quadgebra and the second one is an algebra. At the beginning of this lecture, I I have announced that we'll work with the this space, which is this the space of loops. We call it free loop space. Indeed, this is the set of continuous map from S1. S1 here is the unit cycle to X. But the topology here is what? It's the compact open topology. The compact open topology is what? If you have X topological space, Y a topological space, and CXY, the set of continuous map. Then we have K, a compact of X, U, an open set of Y, denoted by D, K, U, the set of continuous map from U to K. We call open, compact open topology here is the, just the topology generated by this subset. Okay. So the free loop says the free loop says here is induct with such topology. Now that we have say something about the algebra structure on the chain complex and quotient complex and a word on the free loop space, we can move to the projective resolution. Projective resolution. Okay. Free module. We consider here A, a differential graded algebra. M, an A module. M is said to be free if m is equal to 
이 당소 where b is a k if free k module okay let us give let us have this remark if b equal to b, b alpha is the basis of b then b is also the basis for our m as a module Okay. Moreover, if A and A prime are two differential graded algebra and phi, the morphism of graded algebra, we have the relation, this relation A prime M equal to A prime. Automorphism A prime okay. okay. Let us give the definition of projective module. Module but before before going to that definition we we, we know we, we have to we have to have, we have to keep in the mind that when a, a module is free you have a basis affected to that to that module so any free module is associated to some basis okay projective module definition so an a module m is said to be projective if m plus n is a free a module uh, an equivalent definition is the following one m is projective if have m here p here and q here m is projective if any map phi here lift through a subjective map psi here means that you have him that means that you have a map psi kill here so that psi composite by phi killed equal to phi in other words m is projective if for any subjective map and for any map from m to p you have there exists a map phi charge here so that so that you have this such identity
and of course any free resolution is any free module is a projective module from this definition you can see it very easily okay now let us move to the notion of projective resolution Projective resolution definition, projective resolution definition, this notion. Okay. Let M, D, be an A module. A projective resolution, projective resolution of M is just the complex together with an isomorphism uh, sorry this map is not, a, a, is not the, an isomorphism it's a Kaiti isomorphism so psi Indeed, what we have here is So, an A module M is an A module M. This is said to be a projective resolution of that of this module. If this sequence of linear map here, a linear map is exact. Exact means the kernel of uh, the image of this is equal to the kernel of that, and so on. Okay. Now, an example of Projective resolution. If M here is projective as module, then this is an isomorphism. This sequence defines a projective resolution of M. At zero degree, we have M. At the other degree, we have zero. So this defines a projective resolution of, of M. Okay. In the, in the note, we gave, I, gave, I gave another example. The second example here, I give the second example in the notes. Okay, now we are going to, going to go to, to give you a, a definition of proper projective resolution. Proper projective resolution. Okay, 
m d is an a module an the projective resolution of m This projective resolution is said to be proper if for any S in N we have zero ZS of M ZS of P zero S. Zs of P1 S, Zs of P2 S, and so on. Zs of Pk0. We have here the different here we have rho differential here D1, D2, and Dk here. This sequence is exact. And zero here, H S of M, H S of P zero S, H S of P one S, H S of P. Two S H S of P K S have here okay we have here H S of go here where H S here of M denote the homology groups of degree S, the same for P0S, the same for P1S, and so on. And here, we have ZS, M, denote The set or the sub module, sub module of cycle or cocycle of M. The same thing for P0S, P1S, and so on. So a resolution, a projective resolution of M is said to be proper if in addition we have these two sequences exact okay And let us uh, check some results related to this uh, related to this uh, notion of projective projective resolution. The first result is this one proposition proposition every a module 
M has a projective resolution. Resolution. This is the first result. The second result is the following one. Any two projective resolution projective resolution of M can be compared. More precisely, more precisely for any two projective or there exist between two projective resolution of M. Of course, there, there, there is another, another result which is uh, obvious. Uh, since any free module is uh, projective, so when you have a, a free resolution is what the free resolution of M is just a resolution in which each P I star, let's see this, uh, when you have a resolution like this, resolution of M, have here P0, P1 star, P2 star. Okay, so this resolution, resolution of M is said to be free if each P here is free. Of course, in the, in, the, um, in the definition of the projective resolution, each P here is projective. So, and since any free resolution is projective, the free, any free module is projective, the free resolution is obviously projective. Okay. Now let us prove the results that I give. I give here. Proof. We are going to prove that for an arbitrary A module M, we can build a free resolution. Just consider if our M is, is free, we don't have a problem. We don't have just have just, just have to take this. This our M is free. We have this resolution. So the existence of the, the projective resolution is done by taking this. And we assume that our M is not free. It's not projective. So assume that M is not projective or free. Consider P0, the projective A module, or a free A module, free. And then define a map from
which is surjective. Since this is free, we can define the map from this to that. Have this. We assume that we have G1 here from P, P2 here and so on up to PK PK minus one star. We are going to build half DK minus one here. Okay, okay. Uh, here D three, D two is here. Okay. We assume that all these all those maps are are already are already constructed. So from from row to DK minus one. We are going to build this one. Okay. We assume that D row and D I is are constructed. Are constructed. Constructed. I from one to K negative one. Okay. We consider our P, our P here. All our P here are free module. So they are, they are projective. So we, we consider also PK, free module, so projective. And we define DK plus one, taking the, the it value on the kernel of DK minus one, which is equal to the taking the value here. Okay. So I define my my unknown map GK plus one from PK plus one to this sub this is a sub module of P K negative one star. I define my map here, a linear A map. So that this map plus one is subjective. Means that in of the GK plus one is equal to curve of the kernel of this. And since all the previous maps constructed here are verify the, 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 the exactness of the sequence means that M of DK of DI is equal to the kernel of M kernel of GI negative one. We have this sequence. P0 star, P1 star, G1 here, P2 star. This sequence is an exact sequence. Because by the construction here, this map is subjective and you have the exactness here. This map has been constructed so, so that we have this relation. So all these map are, all, all this sequence of map, the sequence is exact. So our, our sequence here define a free, a projective, free, a projective resolution of uh, M. Okay, now let us move to the fact that if we have P zero star P one star P two star 
P K negative one star P K star and so on. We have here rho, we have here D1, D2, D3, DK, DK. Okay. This is a projective resolution of M. Zero star. One star. Two star. Okay. These are two projective resolution of M, the same M. We are going to, to show that there, there exists a map of graduate module between P and Q. So we are going to, to show that there is a map F0, F1, F2, and so on. Fk, negative 1, and Fk here. Yeah. So that the diagram, all the, the sub-diagram here commute. Means that this diagram commute, this one commute, and so on. Okay. This will be done by induction on K. On the on the, this index here. By using the fact that all the modules here are projective. Okay, so I will start by constructing the first one. We have here zero M P zero star. We also have here zero M P zero star. What we have here, here is not here is not P, it's Q. We have the identity here. Okay. What we know is that these two modules are projective. By using the fact that they are projective as we see before we saw before if m is projective let's say is p is projective for any surjective map here we have uh, let's fix here n m we have a map if P is, sorry, is projective. For any surjective map like this, there exists a map alpha here so that the diagram commute. I will use this property. We saw it before. I will use this property to, to construct this map. Okay. So P is projective. Q is also projective. The two are projective. So by using this composition here, let us take it, let us write it like this: P zero star M. We have here Q. I want the map from here to to here. So I have here P zero. Q, Q0 star, I have a map here. This is my row. This is, let's say, row prime. Okay. This is my row here. This is my row prime. These two maps, this map is surjective, this one. According to this first. The sequence is exact. This map is surjective. So there exists a map here. Let's call it F0. So that the diagram is, com is, is commutative. 
since P0 star is surjective, then there exists F0 from P0 star to Q0 star such that F0 such that uh, rho prime composite by F0 equal to rho. So we have the map here, F0. So our F0 here has been constructed. We assume that all, the, all those maps up to k negative 1 are constructed. The next step is to construct our F k. Okay. Okay, so we have P K negative one F K negative one to Q K negative one start here constructed. Our objective is to construct P the map from this to Construct this one. But we have here D, K, and DK here. Let's call it D prime K. This map is not subjective, but I can restrict it to something which is subjective by taking what? By taking this. Mm. Let us take here P, K, negative 1, D, K, P, K, star, and here I consider here the kernel of the kernel of D prime K, negative 1. I define my map F. D prime K, Q, K, star. Okay. What I know is that the sequence, this sequence define a projective resolution means that the sequence is exact. It means that the kernel and the, at this step, the kernel and the image are equal at each step. So the image of D prime D prime K is exactly this. Means that this, this map is subjective. I have this map. I have this subjective map. So I ha there, there is a map here. Let's call it FK so that the diagram commit. So our FK that we are looking for is always a bit in this way. So from two projective resolution of M, the same M, it is possible to construct a map of differential graduate module so that the whole diagram commit. We say that the two projective resolution of the same M are, can be compared. And of, uh, of course, we can also construct a, a map from Q to P and by using once more the property of the projectivity we can show that that the composite f fk composite by jk is homotopic to the identity of q and f jk composite by fk homotopic to the identity of p k star And this means that the two, two distinct projective resolution are 
equivalent means that there exists an equivalence between the two projective resolution. So by this, we end our proof. Okay, now let us move to the Let us move to some remarks. The remarks are the following. M, D, A module, P1, P2, P3, PK. D1, D2, D, D3, D4, here we have DK. A projective resolution of M. Okay. Remark that this complex here is indeed, in fact, the, the B-complex. Yesterday, we see, I say something about the B-complex. The B -complex. Because in each degree of M, M, um, M also is a, comp is a, a chain complex. So, by this, I means for any i in n, we have zero m i rho here p one p zero i. P one I P two I up to P K I. Here we have D K D three D one D two sorry D one and so on. To make it very clear, for the, if, if, when we have zero here, at the zero degree we have this. D0, zero, zero, row here. D1, P1, zero. P2, zero. So up to P0. P, K, 0, something like this. At degree 1, we have M1, P, 0, 1, P, 1, 1, P, 2, 1, and so on, P, K, 1. 
and between the two this this is this we are, we are, I'm trying to to explain what this means and between these two module we have the, 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 the degree what I called yesterday I called it yesterday the the, 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 verti the vertical differential because when you have a, a, big, a big complex you have two differentials the first one is the horizontal differential the second one is the vertical differential so you have here the vertical differential here you can, the, 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 sequence, the sequence continues here you have differential of m so on so i'm trying to explain what this means here so this is a, a big complex we can consider the total complex of I defined it yesterday, yesterday. I said that this is equal to the, this complex is defined like this. The n degree of this complex is equal to i plus g equal to n of b i g. So, so this is, this is, B i g b plus g equal to n. I define it yesterday. Okay. So by using the by using this quasi isomorphism this we obtain the following one so this this isomorphism is the one which define the projective resolution here. So when we have the projective resolution, we have this. This will, will, will help us to, to conclude that from any free resolution, one can have a semi-free resolution. I have not yet def defined the notion of semi-free resolution, but, but very soon I will do it. Okay, the next remark is the following one. If M and M prime are two left A module, left A module, then if we have this, and then we have the projective resolution of M and the projective resolution of M prime, we let, let us denote it by pre prime this, rho prime. By taking We define by taking this, we obtain a free resolution, a free resolution of M
So <coughs> if M and M, M prime are two A module with some condition, the condition that the condition is that uh, A, M and M prime are left uh, A module, then we have this. If we have uh, the projective resolution and the projective resolution here, we can combine the two projective resolution of M and M prime respectively to obtain, to build, the, to construct the the projective re resolution of the tensor product of M and N prime. Here is the pro tensor product here is over A, so A. So the condition here is that this one, this resolution should be a right, a right projective resolution and the, the, the second one is a left projective resolution and then we have this. Okay, now, now let us move to the notion of symmetry resolution, the notion that, that I have announced before. Semi-free resolution. Semi-free resolution. Okay. Before going to that notion, we'll define the notion of semi-free module. And of course, I will give you some examples. Semi-free modules. Definition. A here is an algebra. Consider here A, G A, differential graphic algebra. M, G is an A module. So M is a semi-free module if there exists a sequence of submodule of M. Let, is, let us denote it by M0, M1, M2, M, K, such that M0 and each M, I, is A module on the cycle of M, of course. The cycle of M here is those elements of M whose image are equal to by, by D is equal to zero. Okay. And so that M equal to the union of M I I. This sequence is usually called semi-free filtration. Semi-free filtration of M. If in addition we have M0 equal to 0, the, the semi-free semi filtration is uh, called Hausdorff semi-free filtration, Hasdorf like uh, uh, the topology of uh, the Hasdorf topology. Okay. Of course, if uh, an A module P, differential algorithm module P, can be written as the union of PK 
k greater or equal to 0 with dk an ascending sequence of submodule of P satisfying the condition that I gave here, this, this condition that uh, they are free on the co-cycle. Then our P is said to be semi-free. So if you can write P A module as this, as the, as the union of uh, the, so the ascending sequence with the condition I gave you here, P is semi-free. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions S'il y a des questions, on, on répond d'abord aux questions avant de continuer. Mais s'il n'y en a pas, on continue. Alors, on va donc euh, énoncer un certain nombre de propositions dont on aura... We will... Uh, is there any question? If there, there's, there's no question, I will continue. Okay. If there's no question, let us continue. I will give, I will give here some results with which, which will be useful for the, for the proof of uh, our results. The first result is this, the first uh, result is this proposition. We consider M D a semi semi free resolution, semi free module. And we consider P P and Q are two differential gradient modules which are not semi-free. And with N here is a morphism of module. What I'm, I claim that is an isomorphism. So if M is semi-free, this is a morphism of a quasi-isomorphism. Then this is also a quasi-isomorphism. Let me recall that, I, I said it yesterday, let me, let, this, let me recall that a quasi-isomorphism is what? It's just a morphism from A to B, alpha, so that by moving to the homology, we have the isomorphism. This is a quasi-isomorphism if the induced map in homology or cohomology is isomorphism. The second result is that this is one i, two i. The following diagram consider the following diagram, consider the following, the following diagram. Here we have um, P, 
here, here we have an eta, okay, and here we have m here. So there exists a morphism. Let us call this one uh, alpha. Gamma from M to P such that an eta composed by gamma here yeah, is homotopy to alpha. Okay. And the last one, the last results. Last result is that a quasi isomorphism between two semi free. A module is an equivalent okay. I will start the proof of this proposition by proving one and then two at the end I will, I will, I will prove the, the last one. But before, before this, let me recall something which is known on the homological algebra. If A is, this alpha is a uh, morphism of uh, differential guarded module, shows that in homology, we have uh, an isomorphism. Then we have there exist for all a in a such that the d a equal to zero. And alpha of A equal to GB, B belonging to B, there exists A prime in A and B prime in B, so that G A prime equal to A to A, sorry, and G B prime equal to f of um, a prime negative b. So to show that alpha is a quasi isomorphism is exactly equivalent to show that for any a satisfying this condition, we can find a prime and b prime satisfying this condition. Okay. So we'll use this, this uh, property to, 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 to prove that this map is an isomorphism.
So to prove that one, If what? If uh, only if means that in homology or cohomology this map is an isomorphism so we are going to show that this map is an isomorphism m and p also q has been given as module, differential graduate module. And I told you yesterday that applying the home functor here, we have we also have differential, differential graduate module. So this is a map of differential graduate module here. Now I will apply the, the, the condition, the, the property that I gave you before to show it. Consider F in this one such that T of F is equal to zero. This means exactly that F is in home de, in the, the, the homology of home de M P. Means that this means that uh, f is a, a cycle or a cocycle, depend on the the nature of uh, our complex. And then consider f there in here and. And n composite by f equal to g g. Here n composite by f is just from a of m applied to applied to f. So the image of F with this map, by this map, is exactly this. N composite by F is the image of uh, F by this map. So we have this. We are looking for F prime in ohm the M P and J prime in ohm of M Q such that the 
g of f prime equal to f and and what and g prime of g of g prime equal to n eta composite by f prime negative g. Okay. So our f prime and j prime we are looking for will be constructed by induction on m. Don't forget that m is semi free. So m is semi free. So we have uh, m is equal to the union of m k k positive with mk, the sequence of submodule of this, such so that m0 and mk, mi quotient by mi negative 1 are free module on the cycle of uh, m. So, We assume that our f prime and j prime are structured on m i i from one from zero to k negative one we are going to construct okay We consider here um, our m k here is equal to what? It's equal to according to this definition, m k over m k negative one is semi-free. Means that we have this. Mm, k minus one. This is yeah is the set of uh, co-cycle of M. Because this is semi-free for each I, so for I equal to K, we have something like this. Means that M K is equal to M K negative one plus direct uh, summation, which is something like this. Okay. Now, consider here the D. Here we have a score, of course, we have D. We have a D here from Z K to M K negative 1 and put PI equal to what? PI equal to f of z i z g j minus negative one degree of f f prime of d okay where 
z i z j here denote the basis of z if we go back to the definition of the free module we have this this is a set of cycle means that we have a basis here and put also equal to j of zj equal to g of zj equal plus uh, negative degree of f g prime of d okay have this by easy calculation one can show that d is equal dpg equal to 0 and um, n eta of b g equal to n eta is equal to d of pg of this if you apply here the differential here, when you apply the n eta, you have this identity. By using the property that I gave you before for the quasi isomorphism, there exists P prime G in P prime G here belong to to P and P prime G belong to Q such that We have what? So that we have G of P prime equal to P and D, the second one of Q prime, QG prime equal to N PG prime negative. Pg. Okay. To end our this phase, uh, the, 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 the proof of number one, we just have to put f of z uh, I'm trying to define to, to okay. of zg equal to pre prime g and prime equal to equal to uh, q prime g okay remark that in this definition our f prime here and g prime extend the f prime and g prime define in the first part here. I just have to define my f prime and j, g, j prime in this section here. This is what I did here because I say that the, the zi, zg, zj uh, is the basis of uh, this one. So I have already finished by, uh, by the construction of f prime and g prime. Okay. So the proof of number one is okay. Now let us go, let us move to the proof of number two. In number two, we are asked to show that if we have M, this diagram here, P
n eta, and here we have m. We have here a morphism here. We call, we call it alpha or n eta, or we call it uh, phi, so that n eta composed by phi homotopic to psi. Okay. Uh, let me remind you something. Consider home A of M P and home of M Q. The one we have before. Our map is here. This is a map. I, I, we, sh we showed before that this map is a quasi isomorphism. Okay. So, by moving to the homology at the degree zero, we have this and we have here uh, h0 of ohm a of m and eta we have it here but these two sets are set of homotopy classes of maps why yesterday I say a word on homotopy between two maps. So, an element here is what? An element here is F here. Let us denote this by this, a class here. It's something, it's thought that F is a map, an A map from M to P satisfying df equal to zero. D here is the differential on this uh, module. But the differential here is what? Is g m composite by f plus no, negative, negative one f composite by g that's what you saw yesterday. Okay, now if I say that f class of f equal to class of j means that f negative j is equal to, is a boundary, a boundary here. That means there exists j so h so that I have this where h belong to ohm of M uh, yes okay saying that the two classes are equal means that you have this F and J here are of degree zero means that and the differential here is zero. Means that this map is of, the, of degree zero because we, you are, you are, we, are, we, are, we are we are doing the summation of two maps of degree zero. The summation is of degree zero. But this one is of degree one, or negative one or one. Means that to have the, 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 this identity, you have, must also have the, the, the equality between, between the degree. So we have degree zero here. here. Here also you must have here also degree zero. Means that this one must be of degree one or negative one. Degree of H, which degree of H equal plus one. So we have what F negative J equal to D. Here's the differential of in this in this 
module equal to d m composite by h plus d negative negative one degree of h h composite by d p the degree of h is plus or negative or one that means composite by h this is negative negative is plus h composite by dp so we have here f j means that f and j are homotopic we saw it yesterday so these are set of homotopic classes of map from m to p and this is also a set of homotopic classes of map from m to p to p here is here is q okay so what I'm what I'm trying to, to, to show here is that this map is here is this map here is the isomorphism and this map belong to this one this one is the one is that P which have been given so we are looking for that this one since this map is the isomorphism, for any map here, we can find the map here satisfying the condition Then for psi belonging to home A of home A of what? M Q there exist phi belonging to home A of M such that um, n composite by phi Is equal to is equal to what is equal to to psi. Well, let, let me write it here. But a zero of ohm de, de m and eta apply to the class of phi is what is just the class of n composite by phi equal to the class of psi this is the class of homology a class of homology okay so we have n composite by phi homotopy to psi that's this is what we are looking for So the less results of this proposition the last results of this proposition is to show that between two uh, semi-free A module, we have an equivalence. We just apply these results and then we obtain the result, the, 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 that, that number three. Number three is a consequence of this. Okay. 
Okay, now let us move to the notion of semi-free resolution. The definition first. Okay. Is let M D be semi free module. Or uh, le uh, don't have to, to take it semi as semi free. Let us take it M as uh, an A module. A module. And then we consider here uh, a semi free A semi free resolution. And A. And a semi-free resolution of M is just what is is an A semi-free Modules together with the quasi isomorphism. Uh, let me take it like this. That quasi isomorphism is what is uh, M defined from this. From P to M. Each this is a B, a B complex. Each component of this complex is semi free. Okay, now the related. Let me give you uh, some examples of uh, the notion of semi-free resolution. Uh, if uh, we have if M P zero star P one star is a free resolution. This is the particular projective resolution. I told you that if when all the components here are free, then we, we call this, so that this sequence is uh, exact, we call this free resolution. So when we have a free resolution of M, by taking the total complex of P star star, we saw that this is a quasi isomorphism. So when you have a free resolution, we move to the by moving to this quasi isomorphism, we have a semi free res resolution of M by taking the filtration here. Filtration here is what is given by what? They give you the, the good filtration. Which is so called to what? Which is so called to
So let me let me denote it like this. The total complex of this big complex power G is just the summation of I defined before tot of C K C star star to be summation of C I C G I plus this applied to N here. C I plus G equal to N. So we have just the summation, this summation equal to this. By taking this the this filtration, by taking this filtration, each component here is a module. When you divide it, it's a free module. When you divide it, you still you still have a free module, and then this is the semi-free resolution. There are some results here which can be proved as we did in the case of uh, projective resolution. The first result is that any, any A module M has a semi-free resolution. The second one is, is that if you have P and P prime to semi free resolution of M, then the two are related by an equivalence. Okay. So, the proof of this is, uh, can be done in the similar way. And of course, I gave the proof, the proof in, the, in the notes. Okay, the proof in is in page uh, 13 and 14, of course. The next proposition, next results. You consider A and A prime to differential graded algebra. And here we have phi, a morphism of differential graded algebra. We have M and N, A module, M prime and N prime, N prime, A prime module. The structure of A module can be transferred to M prime and N prime via this map. We have just to define the action of A on, a on M prime and the action of A on N prime as follows. A tensor M prime to M prime is, is given by A M prime is equal to A dot M prime equal to phi of A M prime. The same, in the same way, we define the action of A on N prime. The next is that if 
alpha is a map from m to is alpha if a map a map from m to m prime and beta a map from n to n prime a map of a, a linear map then we have this relation here m n to n m prime n prime here we have uh, here we have a we have a prime and here we have to let me write it very very clearly a m n a prime n prime n prime okay here we have a uh, phi of alpha beta okay this is one of the result that we will need to prove the main problem of you know of the this lecture so let me explain first all the term here I said that when you have that any module has a semi-free resolution. So you have M has a free resolution, N has a free resolution, semi-free resolu semi resolution. So for the same for M prime and N prime. So we call this the differential tau of Island Bemo. This is in fact a functor from the category of differential graduate module to the category of graduate module so that the tau of M N is equal to what? Is equal to the homology of P tensor N over A, where P denote the semi-free resolution of M. Okay. So, by using this, we have if you have the map alpha from this to that, you have a map beta from this to that. Of course, we'll have the map. This map, the, the map can extend to the map uh, alpha tensor beta, which is defined from M tensor N to M prime tensor N prime, can extend to P tensor n to p prime tensor n prime where p prime is the semi free resolution of m prime so this map is exactly the extension of of alpha tensor beta to this because by taking the homology here, by taking the homology, we have P tensor N, P prime tensor N prime. Take the homology here. We have H of alpha tensor phi, tensor beta. In addition, if phi is an isomorphism and alpha beta equivalence means that the, the alpha and beta are quasi isomorphism, this map is an isomorphism. If alpha is equivalence, beta equivalence, and phi isomorphism, we have an isomorphism here. This comes from the fact that 
is alpha is if beta is an isomorphism by taking by considering the m tensor beta which is defined from n from m tensor n to m tensor m prime n prime this is also a quasi isomorphism and in addition we can show that if alpha is a quasi isomorphism from m tensor n to m prime tensor n is also a quasi isomorphism so our alpha tensor beta is just alpha tensor the identity of n composed by beta by uh, the identity uh, identity of m mm -hmm. tensor beta something like this this one we can show that it is an isomorphism this one, this one, we can show that it is an a, 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 This is this is a, the composition here. It's a quasi isomorphism. Then we have the result. Okay. So we have this. Another result is that in the category of uh, differential graded algebra, this is a corollary, a corollary of uh, the, the, the previous proposition. If I have a, a a here, B here, C, D, P1 here, P2 here, P3 here, and P4 here. A commutative, a commutative diagram. Um, A1, B1, A1, B1, C1. G1 and have here alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and beta and alpha 4. Commutative up to homotopy. Commutative up to homotopy means that uh, phi, two, phi 3 composite by phi 1 is homotopy to phi 4 composite by phi 2. The two are homotopic. The same thing here. A2, A, A, A2, B2, C2, and D2. Here we have beta, beta 2, beta 1, sorry, beta 2, beta 3 is here, and beta 4 here. The diagram is also commutative of the homotopy. Then, using the results Using these results, we have
that uh, the tau here is uh, this one and this one. We can have the we put the other. A one, A two, B one, B two, C one. Uh, here is B one, B two. Here is C one, C two, and the last one is D one, D two. Here we have. A, half B here, we have C here, and we have here D. The map are given by the map given here. So here we have to go from A to C. The map you have is phi 1. We have phi 1 here. To go from A to C1, we have the map alpha 1. So we have alpha 1 here and beta 1 here. To move from A to B, we have the map phi 2, alpha 2, and beta 2 here. Here we have phi, phi 4, alpha 4, and beta 4 here. And we have here phi 3, alpha 3, and beta 3, 3 here. This diagram commit. The, com the, committee, the committivity here is not, is not uh, uh, up to homotopy. It's the natural committivity. The, the, the diagram is naturally committivity. It means that we have the committivity here. Have this composite here is equal to this one. We don't have the homotopy like, like I, 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 I did here. Because here we are, we, are, we are manipulating the homology. We are manipulating here the homology. So when you have two maps which are homotopic, when you move to the homology, you have the, the two maps are equal. Okay. Now that we did this, all this, by using um, uh, algebra material, we can move to the topology. We yesterday we see that we saw that sorry we saw that um, uh, n that d c of x for a given topological space eh, is a stop module of C x of uh, the coefficient in this is, and we have this, we saw it yesterday. So that this sequence is, is a short exact sequence. Okay, when you dualize it, we have what? By taking the dual of this uh, sequence, so we have this inclusion here. Yesterday, I told you that this one is a quasi isomorphism. But by taking the, the dual, you also have here a quasi isomorphism. So you have here this quasi isomorphism, which induces the results, these results, uh, n x here, n x here. Mm 
let me write it very well and here you have a It is uh, 4 o'clock, we are supposed to end at uh, this time.